Western Massachusetts getting answers on the role social media plays in the mental health of teenagers. Between 2009 and 2019, depression rates doubled for all teenagers across the country. And local experts are saying that the use of social media has contributed to those higher numbers. Western Massachusetts reporter Christian Brunel has that story. Alondra Nieves was just 11 years old when she opened her first social media account. Now she's 17 and has profiles on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. The first one was Facebook, mostly because of my family, who they also have Facebook. She tells Western Mass News she often uses social media for entertainment purposes, but can't help struggle with certain side effects that come with it. Cyberbullying obviously is a huge issue, and a lot of people do go through a lot of you know, turmoil because of that. And even if you try your best to ignore it or black accounts, it's still gonna pop up no matter what. Many doctors refer to social media use in teens as a mental health crisis and say there is also an impact on how teenagers feel about their body. Nieves agrees. Let's say I'm not feeling that good with my body or my body image, whatever it may be. And then I see like some other model or somebody else, then I compare myself to that. That obviously does not help my situation. Do you ever think about the possibility of deleting social media as a whole because of that comparison that you see constantly? I would say, yeah. Um, when I know my mental health is a bit struggling, especially like with my image or whatever the case may be, I try not to be on it as much because I know it's gonna make it worse. Growing research is alarming. Studies show that increased social media usage is associated with higher depression rates. Especially amongst middle and high school students. The statistics are pretty clear and they're quite startling that depression is on the rise among adolescents in the U.S. and elsewhere, especially adolescent girls. Western Mass News spoke with Dr. Erica Scharr at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. She conducts research specific to the role that media has in the lives of children and adolescents. There are a lot of potential trigger points, of course, um, for young people with social media use. And so I would hope that parents and caregivers are just keeping the channels of communication open, keeping track of how the kid seems to feel, and then, yes, getting in touch with some professional resources if it seems warranted. The chief of child psychiatry at Bay State Medical Center says every patient he sees struggles with mental health issues, with social media platforms being the root of the problem. All of my patients at this point are dealing with social media on some level, again, some getting some real positives from it, but others, you know, really increasing the anxiety, depression at times, uh, feeling very bad about some of the interactions that are going on and feeling uh, assaulting their self-esteem when things are not going in their way. He also shares these tips to maintain mental health while using social media. Those including limit social media usage, unfollow accounts that upset you and participate in other activities offline, such as sports, music, theater, schoolwork, community groups. If parents feel like their kids' social media use is having real negative effects on their self-esteem or their mental health, to consult the kids' pediatricians who can often point families in the right direction to help deal with these type of problems. Make social media a small part of your life, not a huge part of your life. And for those teens, Nieves tells us something needs to change from both a government and community standpoint. Yeah, I don't think it's talked about enough and it's not really like an open thing. And I feel like it should be, you know, making sure that everybody knows what it is, what are the warning signs and what to do about it. Reporting for Western Mass News, I'm Kristen Burnell.